Paris, we go now to the place where both Tim Mapes and former Speaker Michael Madigan were once big shots, the Illinois State Capitol. There's lots of activity in the session's final days, including movement on an elected school board for CPS, new legislative districts, and more. Amanda Venicky is in Springfield. Amanda, where to begin? Brandis, I'm actually going to start off with the more. There is a lot of movement of legislation here in the House and then across the Capitol Dome in the Senate, but so far only one constitutional amendment has gained traction. Both chambers have passed it, which means that it will be on the ballot before voters next November, November of 22, for voters to decide whether they want to enshrine in the state constitution the right to unionize. The measure says that employees in Illinois will will have the fundamental right to organize and to collectively bargain. And no company, municipality, or state law can interfere with or diminish that. State Representative Lakeisha Collins says it is workers who drive the economy. We must not forget about the people who are actually doing the work. The hotel workers, hospitality, the cab drivers, the ones who are washing the windows, workers everywhere across the state of Illinois, and businesses, they come here in droves because there are many loopholes for them to come here and suck Illinois dry. Now, some Republicans did vote for this proposal, but most did not. And they said, no, businesses are not flocking to the state. And they say that is in part because rules are slanted too far in favor of unions. Also, they say because of out of control property taxes and corruption. The state representative Andrew Chesney says the constitutional amendment is just a pre-election favor from Democrats to their allies, generous labor unions. This isn't about men and women in hats slamming hammers and building stuff. These are the people right outside this door ready to send contribution checks to your campaign to get you reelected. We had another Republican of the House saying that this is the wrong constitutional amendment to get priority. Maybe a constitutional amendment to address the ethic issues we have where we could do a recall and allow citizens to recall corrupt elected officials. Maybe just even an ethics bill. Maybe a constitutional amendment on property taxes that are driving people out of this state. And then I thought about it. I said, you know what? It's been a, a, a clown show with this redistricting thing. Maybe we're going to do a constitutional amendment on a fair map. Now, to that end, Governor J.B. Pritzker had promised to put an end to gerrymandering, but Democrats have instead kept to themselves the power that they do have with their supermajorities to draw the new legislative districts that impact future elections. And no surprise, Republicans aren't happy about those lines. They say that those are slanted in Democrats' favor. But it's not just the GOP. Other groups are upset too, like Jay Young of Common Cause Illinois, who says that the state has been a leader on all sorts of areas, including voting rights otherwise, but is failing to be a beacon when it comes to redistricting. But when we hear that Illinois is following in the shoes of states like Oklahoma, that are taking advantage of the pandemic and, and Trump's sabotage of the census. National observers are rightly worried that states, states that wish to silence voices will follow our lead. What you are hearing today is not one community's voice saying we've got to do better, not three communities' voices saying we've got to do better. Look at us across these screens. You're hearing from the Latino community, the African American community, the African immigrant community, the Jewish community, the Muslim community. Said says that the Muslim community, the Muslim Civic Coalition, in fact, participated in 22 of some 40 redistricting hearings previously. And even with that, she says she does not feel as if members' voices were heard or taken into consideration in these new proposed maps. Democrats say that there is time for that. The voices that you just heard were from a hearing last night. Now there is another hearing on redistricting going on right now. There's certainly things that I think that we can take from um, uh, uh, the, the witnesses uh, testimony here. And so, you know, this is this is hopefully going to make a, a better product based off of the, the hearing that why we're here today. 
Democrats repeatedly stressing that they are making this process transparent. However, under repeated questioning from both legislators, reporters, and those organizations, Democrats have not said what data they use to draw those boundary lines. It is not just the maps for the legislature. For the first time in 60 years, Democrats have also introduced a plan that would redo the current Illinois Supreme Court districts. Now this, after a Democratic justice lost a retention battle last year, meaning that the party could lose control of the state's high court. And the thinking is that Democrats would have a better chance at winning or keeping that seat under the new proposed map. You do have a lot else in the works and including some version of an elected school board for the city of Chicago's public schools. Senate President Donna Harmon all but promised it. I wanna emphasize for the committee, I am confident that we will pass a compromised elected school board bill, this General Assembly. A measure did advance that would create a 21 member all elected school board for CPS, but Harmon gave his assurances that that is not the final plan. Brenda, back to you. Amanda, thank you.